Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon, guys and gals. Today, we're talking about pocket carry revolver versus semi-auto. So one of the first things you may have noticed about those clips right there of actually shooting these firearms, if you were counting, we had seven shots here and five shots here. So that has to be talked about when you're comparing a revolver versus a semi-auto in the same size uh, window, I guess you would say. Um, capacity is, is, it's important. It's not the end all be all, but do keep in mind with the same size semi-autos and, and revolver in comparison size, you are gonna get a little bit more capacity with a semi-auto. So that's one thing to consider. The next thing to consider is a reload. So when you go to reload your semi-auto, you will reload with a magazine. When you go to reload a revolver, you're going to use either a speed loader or a speed strip. And let me just grab five rounds while we're talking here and show you how this speed strip works. Uh, it's just a little rubber strip. And this one holds six. That's a five shot revolver. So I'm just putting five in. And you know, it's a flimsy rubber strip and it's made to put a couple in at a time. You don't try to bend it in a circle to fit the cylinder. But the way that it works is, let me get a good view here, drop two in, rip them off, two in, rip them off, last one, rip it off, and then if you load six, you got a spare on here. Now your revolver is reloaded. So that's not a speedy reload, even though they call them speed strips, but it does it does allow you to carry extra ammunition that's not just loose in your pocket. With the revolver, let's go ahead and show the speed reloader. You've got your five rounds loaded. Uh, with this and the speed strip, you need to be conscious of your bullet profile. If it's a rounded profile, that's gonna lend itself more to uh, allowing you to start those into the cylinder. If it's like a wad cutter or semi wad cutter or something with a real squared off profile, your bullets could actually get hung up on the cylinder face and be stubborn about going in. So if I'm carrying a speed loader or a speed strip, I may carry one round in the gun, but I'll carry my backup as something that lends itself to fast reloading. This is a little faster, so you drop it in. I'm sure everybody's seen this. Paul Harrell's pretty good at it. Twist the knob, rounds come off, and your cylinder is loaded, okay? So, well, why wouldn't everybody just carry the speed loader? Sorry, I had to cut there. I wanted to, to fill these back up just to illustrate a point. So I asked if, you're, if, if this is faster, why wouldn't everybody just carry a speed loader? Well, the reason being is if you look at the profiles, no matter which way you turn this thing, it's going to have some width to it. So when you put it in your pocket, there it is. It's sticking out. I mean... It may not bother you, it doesn't really bother me. I'll, I'll carry speed loaders, but some people it may. So with a speed strip, you give up a little bit of speed and it sets flat in your pocket. You really can't even tell that it's there. So if it's in your pocket, you pull out, you got your five rounds right here, but while you're carrying it, it is a little bit less of a nuisance than a speed loader. <coughs> so to the semi-auto. Everyone knows, semi-auto, eject the old, into the new, rack the slide if need be. That's pretty quick. Let's see if we can illustrate all three of these reloading methods. So first up, we'll do the semi-auto. I have three in this mag, three in this mag. I'll put this mag in my off pocket, just like I'm gonna carry it. I won't draw because that's not what we're emphasizing on here. So I'm gonna charge it and we'll go. Okay, next up, I'm gonna use the speed strip. I have three rounds in here ready to go. 
I do have all five rounds on this because they're loaded into the cylinder in kind of an individual manner. I will load all five, but the second round I'll just shoot three. So if you're doing a reload, you're going to want to load all five. So that's what we'll do during the reloading process. Next up, the speed loader. Again, I'm gonna load all five, because it does matter on, on these, whereas a magazine like the semi-auto, doesn't really matter how many you have in it, the loading process is the same way. These, it kinda matters, so we'll load five. I'll shoot three, load five, shoot three, okay? Next thing that I want to talk about is something that happens quite a bit in the winter months. And a lot of people will just throw on a jacket, run to the store, throw their gun in their jacket pocket and go on. This is something that I hear people talk about quite often. And in that manner, there is a difference in the semi-auto and a, and a revolver. And one of those reasons is this. Pull on the trigger, nothing is happening. That is a charged weapon. Let me actually show you the round. Primer, it's good to go. This will not go off in your pocket reliably. Yeah, if I wasn't pushing forward, it probably would have went off. Probably would have only went off once because it has to reliably cycle. It has to be able to eject that spent brass. But whenever, I'm gonna lay this down real quick. I still have a cleared gun. But when I pull the trigger just like this, it will fire. If this slide is pushed back, it will not fire. You're out of battery. So if you push that into the front of a coat pocket and you push that slide back, it's not gonna go off. I just went off to let it go. But if that's pushed back far enough, it won't go off. It doesn't take a whole lot. So keep that in mind. But if you've got a revolver in your pocket, being on internet forums most of my adult life, you hear a lot of things, whether this round's more powerful than that round, this round's more powerful than that round. And some will argue either way that the 380 ACP is just as powerful as the 38 Special. Now, I won't say that it is, but at the same time, I can't sit here and honestly say that the 38 Special is that much more powerful than the 380. To me, they're both on the low end of a defensive caliber. Oh, I know the 30, some of the 38 special people out there are gonna get upset over that one, but I do carry both. I, I, I like both. Uh, I think with the proper bullets, both can be very effective. But on the power scale, I've gotta give it to the 38 special. It does edge out the 380 just a little bit. 380, you're gonna shoot something in the 90, 95 grain uh, spectrum as far as bullet weight. 38 special, you can go up to 158 grains down to a 100, 110. I, I like 110 grain rounds in this. But you're gonna have a little bit more mass. They're the exact same diameter. So you're gonna have a little bit more mass with 38 Special, and your velocities are gonna be kind of comparable. Okay, so I wanted to come in to where I could get up close and personal here and kind of show some of the dimensions of these. And I'm just gonna kind of show you right off the bat with the holsters on. And you know, that can vary based on your holster of choice or whatever, but I'm gonna show you what I've got here with mine. So kind of line them up the best I can. Can't really see that LCP back there, so we'll stick it up here. And you can see there's not a huge difference as far as the overall profiles. Um, the guns themselves don't have a huge difference. Uh, I'm gonna take them out of the holster here. Try to line them up. You can see that way and this way. I mean, the LCP is gonna be a little bit smaller, but in all reality, uh, the sizes kind of, they kind of equal out. 
because with this, you got more of a squared type profile and that kind of shows in the pocket. This part right here, uh, it does kind of stick out a little bit. Whereas with the revolver, this is kind of chopped off. You got more of a rounded profile and it's round, a round butt on a J frame. But the overall profile is a little bit more rounded as opposed to square and blocky. Uh, one of the big, let's show clear. One of the big uh, differences as far as size and profile is going to be in your width. So, yeah, these guns are dirty. You just saw me shooting them. Uh, the cylinder on the revolver does give you a little bit of a disadvantage on the width in your pocket. But, again, the, the overall shape and contour of the revolver itself does kind of lend itself to setting against your leg in a little bit different way. I haven't really noticed a big difference in how they carry as far as printing. Yeah, you can kind of see the cylinder a little bit in your pocket, but you're not going to really know what that is in someone else's pocket if you just see a cylinder sticking out, unless, of course, you're gun guys like most people watching this video are. But for the average person out there, you're not going to be able to tell, yeah, he's carrying, he's carrying a gun in his pocket because I can see the cylinder. It's probably not going to be the case. <clears throat> weight the weight on these are within four ounces of each other the j-frame unloaded of course both of them unloaded comes in around the 15 ounce mark and the lcp2 comes in around 11 ounces this is one of the lighter guns that are on the market four ounces don't sound like a lot but when you take it from 11 to 15 it's noticeable not so much in jeans where you're wearing a belt and your clothes fit you but I have noticed in uh, ball shorts when I carry around the house that the LCP2 fully loaded does carry easier in ball shorts as opposed to a fully loaded J frame. And one of the big reasons being is the weight. And you know, in ball shorts, you may not carry in ball shorts, so this may not matter, but like in ball shorts, you don't really have much structure to the material. And that little bit of extra weight really lets it swing when you're walking, it's slapping off the side of your leg. Whereas those four ounces that you, you give up by going to this, those four ounces are actually quite noticeable in ball shorts. If you don't carry in ball shorts, it doesn't matter. Uh, the next thing that I wanna talk about is the triggers. So if you're customarily a semi-auto shooter, you're probably gonna enjoy this type of trigger more. This has a very Glock-like trigger. It's not super light, it's a good reset, but it doesn't travel real far. Um, it's like I said, it's very Glock-like. If you're not familiar with Glocks, you just have to take my word for it. It's, it's a good trigger. A lot of people actually have a problem with the LCP2 as opposed to the LCP because they did make big changes in the triggers from the LCP1 to the LCP2. And the trigger on the LCP2 is by far more shootable for me than the LCP original. The LCP original was actually more like a double action revolver trigger. It had a really long take up, fairly heavy, and broke way back. Whereas this one does not. It has that trigger dingus like a Glock. I hate to keep comparing them to Glocks, but familiar guns. And it has a fairly short take up. And there's your break. Here's your reset. Like I said, it's not a target gun, but for a pocket gun, it does have a pretty nice trigger. Whereas the double action revolver, it has the traditional long pull, rotating your cylinder as it goes, fairly heavy, and then break. Reset on this is not like a semi-auto. It's gonna have to come all the way out, and then you can shoot again, all the way out, and you can shoot again. Now, this is not just relatable to pocket guns, but revolvers and semi-autos in general. If you don't practice with this, you can what they call short stroke, which means you're not letting the trigger come all the way back out and you try to pull it again and nothing happens. You have to let it go all the way back out. So as far as shootability with the trigger is concerned, the semi-auto takes that one. You know, I like shooting double action revolvers. I shoot them quite often, so I don't have a problem with the double action trigger on a J-frame, whereas a new shooter may. Either way, you're gonna to have to practice with what you got. 
Let me uh, cut real quick. I'll grab my trigger uh, gauge and I'll actually show you the weight differences on these triggers. Okay, guys, I've got a Lyman trigger pull gauge here. Uh, I'll just kind of run it through and show you what we got. So double action revolver, ah, shit. there we go. Eight pounds, 11.2 ounces. Clear, try that again. Just getting used to this thing, I forget to hit ready all the time. Nine pounds, 14 ounces, and one more. Nine pounds, 0.4 ounces. So that's what we got with the double action revolver. Okay, the trigger thing has jacked me up there, so let me try that again. Ready, get on that dingus and pull four pounds, seven ounces. Clear, ready, get on the dingus. Three pounds, 10 ounces. four pounds, seven ounces. Now, I know that sounds a lot for a pocket pistol. And you may be thinking, oh wow, that's too light for a pocket pistol. But keep in mind, I've had this gun for quite some time. The trigger has progressively gotten better as far as shootability and, and light and crisp. The trigger has progressively gotten better. You're probably not going to have one that light directly out of the box. I haven't done anything aftermarket to it. It is a stock trigger, but it has thousands. Probably this one probably has around 2,500 rounds through it, and you can see it's it's got some wear to it. So it's kind of I know this one has a lot more rounds to it than the J frame, so it's kind of not a real fair comparison. But I just wanted to give you a ballpark idea of the weight of the triggers. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would say go over to Facebook and check us out, but we're not there anymore. Zuckerberg decided that the gun dungeon was not welcome. They deleted my profile and they deleted my gun page. So that's no longer there. Instagram, we still live there for now. Don't know if we'll be there long, but I do have an Instagram page, the gun dungeon, all one word. Don't forget to let me know in the comments, guys, which one of these methods you choose. Revolver, semi-auto, what holster do you use? Maybe I can learn something from you guys. Until next time, guys, stay tuned.